Hi, I'm Shelby Williams with Plano City Council. Tonight's discussion was dominated by the EDS redevelopment. But before you hear about that, you're going to have to go through the rest of the meeting. But I'll be quick, I promise. Sorry, that's how these things go. Uh, first, in preliminary open, we had a discussion about the Plano Event Center hotel update. So next to the Plano Event Center, a hotel is being planned, and uh, that is starting to incrementally move forward. How's that for an update? Next, we moved on to the regular meeting, and we had a few proclamations and a presentation. This week is Municipal Court Week. Bet you didn't think that was a thing. Uh, <clears throat> we recognized Veterans Day for November 11th. That is this coming Saturday. Um, Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week is also this week. And we had a presentation about how the Plano Communications Department and uh, the Plano Police Department work with Life Path Systems on an award-winning video about uh, adult counseling services for um, uh, those left behind by suicides. Uh, so well done to everybody there. Uh, we had uh, oaths of office for a few boards and commission members, and then we had uh, comments of public interest. Um, surprisingly, because I was unaware of it, at least it was a surprise to me, uh, for people supporting uh, to protect equestrians in Plano. Apparently some of the paths where horses have been allowed historically um, have been shut down and saying no horses allowed. So um, uh, several folks spoke, and I, for one, like seeing horses in Plano. <clears throat> now we get to EDS. So for those who do not know, the 99 acres of the EDS campus um, at uh, basically Legacy and between Tennyson and Parkwood, I'm sorry, Leg uh, Tennyson <clears throat> um, on Parkwood between Tennyson and Legacy, there we go, <clears throat> the old EDS campus, which was the first real corporate uh, presence we had in Plano, um, <clears throat> founded by Ross Perot, is being redeveloped because uh, the EDS campus is now uninhabited. Um, so it is proposed as a life sciences center, um, which when I first heard about that, I was genuinely excited. Now, I've been a big proponent for a long time about commercial diversification in our city so that we're not the equivalent of a mining town. So when the mine dries up, you know, the town goes belly up. I think we should have a healthily diversified uh, commercial sector. And I think the addition of a prominent life sciences park is a good thing for the city. Now this proposed development <clears throat> um, included 775 multifamily units, a hotel with 300 rooms, um, renovating the existing office space for uh, predominantly life sciences offices, though that's not, that wasn't stipulated in the ordinance language, the zoning language. And then the addition of some manufacturing, which is required to be life sciences oriented, um, light manufacturing. So my hang up was about the multifamily. Um, it was said back in the PNZ meeting and reiterated tonight that that multifamily is required for the people who will work at the life sciences center. Well, they're projected to have 31,000 jobs there at peak. 775 multifamily units, even if every one held an employee, would only cover 2.5% of the jobs. But the multifamily, even though it's being built on the premises, is not actually being reserved for employees of the Life Sciences Center. Um, it's open to the general public. <clears throat> I don't see a way, even if you phase the apartment buildings in, that a substantial portion of the apartments will actually go to the people who work at the Life Sciences Center. Because at any phase of development, at any uh, point when you're layering in jobs, a person who is moving here to work at the Life Sciences Center um, <clears throat> will find a place to live if those apartments aren't available. They'll find some other place to live. And unless it's in Timbuktu, they're not going to incur the pain of moving um, to move to one of those apartments once one opens up. Now, conversely, if the apartments are there first and they're open to the general public, well, apartment occupancy in Plano is very high in the low to mid 90s. So any of units that come available before the jobs are there are going to just be filled by general people looking for a place to live. And they could work next door, they could work in Dallas, they could work in Frisco, they could work in Murphy, they could work all over the place. <clears throat> People seek their housing for a multitude of different reasons. <clears throat> but when they need housing, if that's available, that's what they're going to take. The job that then comes later will have to find some place else to live because that apartment was just occupied by somebody working in Frisco. 
It's just how it works if you're not actually reserving that housing for the employees of the park. And so I could not make the logical connection that those 775 apartments were critical for the success of the Life Sciences Park. Um, I ended up voting no. I lost the vote. It's fine. I cried. We moved on. I didn't actually cry. I said that if those were not apartments but were condos, uh, some ownership option, which I feel we're desperately lacking the smaller footprint ownership options in Plano, which is part of what's exacerbating our housing costs because we have a dichotomy of housing types and we're not providing smaller footprint ownership options. I would have been okay with twice as many units if they had been condos that people could actually own. That was not to be. I would have been okay with twice as many apartments if those apartments had actually been reserved for employees of the Life Sciences Park. That was not to be. And therefore, I could not get on board. Um, there was a robust discussion and an amendment about uh, reserving office space for life sciences uses. Now, the manufacturing um, was already reserved for life sciences. The zoning ordinance required that the manufacturing purposes be limited to uh, what's defined as life sciences in Texas code. Uh, there was no such restriction for the office space. I was actually okay with that. I think the um, the requirement for the manufacturing to be limited to life sciences means that um, life sciences oriented businesses would be drawn more naturally to the office space. And, uh, but we, had, we did put in uh, language that required a majority of that office space to be used in support of life sciences. Um, as was discussed in the, me in the meeting tonight, uh, there are a number of uses um, that uh, can support life sciences and a number of businesses that are not directly life sciences related themselves. Um, a, uh, a good example that was brought up was venture capitalists. Um, you know, the whole life sciences park is meant to kind of be a life sciences incubator and work with startups um, at uh, multiple stages. So it would make sense for a VC office to be located in the same campus. So I didn't have a problem with the language uh, that did not mention life sciences for the office space, but we added it anyway. And the whole thing passed seven to one. Uh, so there's going to be redevelopment of approximately 1.6 million square feet of the existing building space, including the God Pod, and uh, the, additional, uh, the addition of about 400,000 square feet of manufacturing space. Um, and that's going to be limited to therapeutic production for the manufacturing um, so biomedical, uh, it's, um, important to stress that this is not going to be a, uh, a viral research lab, um, of any sort. So don't panic. Uh, then we moved into the anticlimactic, uh, final vote of the evening, which was to rezone, um, an existing space in East Plano near 14th and Los Rios, um, to increase the usable retail space from 15,300 feet to 21,300 feet, the addition of additional 6,000 square feet of uh, re retail space are permitted on that area. Um, and I made the observation that, and that, that went through very quickly, but that applicant whose presentation was very simple, was very short, they had to wait for the very lengthy and robust EDS discussion. But by that point, um, everybody was kind of worn down by the easy EDS discussion. So maybe even though you have to sit through a really long meeting to get there, maybe it's worth it being the applicant who has a comparatively simple request and maybe everybody's just like, okay, yeah, let's, let's approve it. Let's, let's, let's move on. Let's get out of here. Um, <clears throat> but it was a fairly straightforward request anyway. And I have been at meetings where one robust discussion followed another. So who knows? Uh, that is, um, that is it for tonight's council meeting. I do want to foreshadow a couple of things. First, uh, Plano City Council, <clears throat> once again, for the fourth year in a row, uh, I'm very proud to say this has taken root as a tradition. We will be taking turns ringing the bell for the Salvation Army. And uh, that's going to be the, I think, the first, the second two full weekends of December. I think that's December 10th and or 9th and 16th, if I recall correctly. But those two Saturdays, council members will be ringing the bell for the Salvation Army. And I'm also excited to say that I and my youngest daughter will be performing in this year's production of Scrooge by the North Texas Performing Arts. 
Uh, I do not know yet which shows we're going to be performing in, but there will be 12 performances between Willow Bend Theater and uh, the Courtyard Theater in East Plano. And uh, I've only been involved in the rehearsals so far. I've never done anything like this before, but I've been having a blast so far. It's really fun. So uh, <clears throat> I'm playing, by the way, I'm playing Mr. Fezziwig and uh, my youngest daughter it will be playing Mr. Fezziwig's youngest daughter. So she has to pretend that uh, she's my daughter and I have to pretend that I'm her dad. So I think I can get there without a lot of acting skill. But with that, I'm Shelby Williams with Plano City Council. Thank you and God bless. Or should I say God bless us everyone. <laughs>